it's a joy to finally have our first ballet guest here in studio. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movie. All right, you guys, I'm getting totally punny here on To The Point with Kristen Burt. Welcome on in. We are so excited to have you guys here. And of course, To The Point is presented by Popcorn Talk and Dance Network. And I am thrilled that we finally have our first ballet guest, just in time for Nutcracker season. As I said before, Joy Womack. I love that. I did the joy. I thought you that was funny. It. it was great. You did a great <laughs> Welcome job. Welcome here to the studio. I'm thrilled to have you here. I think it's really awesome to be here. And I watch your show on YouTube. And I love the fact that dancers are getting more vocal and more um, open to share their stories online. And it really is able to reach so many different people kinds of people like one of the people who was on the home and family show she's a host she's like oh yeah i used to watch your vlogs on youtube and i was like what <laughs> that's crazy i have to tell you so many people reached out when i announced you as the guest so many people were like i watch her show or uh, on youtube or they say i um follow her on instagram so mm -hmm. you definitely have a strong social media presence for sure i love my prima friends because yeah we're not very many but we're a very strong and very loyal group and it's it's awesome to see so many of them um the best stories are those who started watching the videos and then they started dance oh and that's that the best? so amazing inspiring people because i yeah. think what people think oftentimes is they watch dance and they think well i didn't start at eight or i didn't mm -hmm. you know make it a professional career but listen dance is for everyone i always yeah. say it's for everybody yeah. it really is it really is and there's no age limit and the craziest story was a dad started dancing after his kids like he would take his kids to drop them off at you know, nutcracker practice and, you know, go to ballet class. And they, you know, they kind of ended and went in to focus on school. And he was like, look, I really enjoy this. And he just started taking adult classes. I love that. He's a dance in, dad. He's a dancer. He's <laughs> a dancer. so great. Yeah. Well, I really want to dive in because your story is so fascinating to me. And I was like, I, and this is, it is kind of crazy <laughs> if you really think about it. And you are a California baby first yes. and foremost. Yes. Uh, you were born here and you're one of nine kids. Yes. Yeah. Holy, we, and you were right here in Los Angeles. You were yeah. born, right? I grew up literally on the ocean of San, like Santa Monica, like San Vicente. That's where I grew up. San Vicente and 25th Street, just walking around the block, you know, going surfing in the mornings and then going to school. That was my life until I decided that I really wanted to dance. And my parents actually what kind of kick-started it is my family decided to move to Austin, Texas. And I threw a hunger strike. I was like, this is crazy. Don't you understand that this is my calling? And my mom's looking at me, 10 years old, like, how do you, how do you know what, what you're going to do? How old were you when you started dancing? Well, I mean, I think my parents didn't know what to do with me because I was knocking down furniture and just sort of <laughs> in the way. And my mom had just delivered twins. And I think she was pregnant with another one. And they were just like, we've got to get this terror somewhere. I mean, she is literally pulling down antiques at antique stores. And um, they brought me with my twin brother and sister to uh, like a, a mommy and me dance kind of a thing where they had like ballet, tap and jazz. And I just didn't want to leave the ballet room. And I think it was three or four. That's when incredible. Started, yeah. And then you did eventually wind up at Westside Ballet, yes. correct? Yes. And I, I started pre-ballet there. And they that was my first school, the first time I'd seen The Nutcracker, the first time I got to, you know, really kind of get an idea of this is something that I could do for a living. And it was just incredible to be working with Yvonne Muncy and, and all the amazing teachers. Yeah. And Westside is such a unique school because it's really kind of the feeder program for SAB. There's so many amazing dancers who are principal dancers with uh, New York City Ballet who actually like born and raised and started going to West Side Ballet when they were it's younger. It's one of the strongest yeah. schools out here in Los Angeles and has a long history too. Yeah. I think that's what's so important. And I think that's what's really makes it, uh, it, it sets itself apart because of the, they have a long history. They kind of know the ropes. If that's the way that you want to go, if you want to be a balancing dancer mm -hmm. or you want to dance for an American company, I would say they do a great job of giving kids a performance opportunity. And they're, they're so encouraging and they're just, they really love each and every one of their students. Oh, I love that. So you're 10 yeah. and your parents are moving to Texas. They decided to move when I was 11. Okay. So I, went on hunger strike i refused i said you're ruining my life this is horrible and we moved to austin and i refused to enroll in school and i was traveling back and forth and yvonne finally said to my dad she's like because they took me to ballet austin and i was like this is not training that not is gonna for make you. me a dancer you know and um 
my dad's like, you're 11 years old. You don't know what is going to work for you. And Yvonne pulled him aside and said, look, if you can't find a good Balanchine uh, studio, look for a Russian teacher. And my mom got lost one day and found this Russian woman who just, you know, she was trained Russian and she just reworked with me for six months and then I got accepted to the Kirov and I moved to the Kirov when I was 12. And, then... and so everyone knows the Kirov is in Washington, yeah, D.C. Just so everyone yeah. knows that you, they didn't ship you off to Russia no, just yet. Not yet. <laughs> and then I spent two years there and I wanted more. And Were you there year round or just the year summer round? Front? You year were. round. Okay. And uh, what is so great about Kirov is they really prepared me for Russia. Uh, but that was just when the YGP kind of boom was happening. So. I mean, and that's Youth America Youth Grand Prix. American I'm Grand gonna Prix. throw out acronyms yeah. at people just yeah. so they know. This is, I mean, Youth American Grand Prix is now the biggest uh, like pre-professional ballet competition in the states. But like, when when I was in school, it was sort of it was like up and coming. It was kind of it was a good way to try to launch yourself if you wanted to go to Europe, if you wanted to do that. And uh, we had a couple of girls, fantastic Patricia Joe, who's now with Benjamin Millipier here. <sighs> Um, LA Dance Project. LA Dance Project. She's so brave. I'm so proud of her. And Deanna Pearson, who is, uh, I think she's, she's now in Romania um, with a partner of mine. Anyway, it's so weird. The world, the ballet world is like very this. small world. And they were the mini bitty ba ballerinas. And I was prepubescent, at, you know, at a very young age. And, and my teacher was like, "Look, you don't have the turnout, and you don't have the extension, you don't have the turns, like." to be a YGP baby and and I was so despondent I just wanted to be challenged more and I went up by myself on the train to, to New York City to visit my grandmother and somebody's like look there's a master class going on the Bol one of the bullshit teachers is going and I went and she said look would you be interested in coming to the year on program and it was just so serendipitous and just everything that's happened in my life it was almost like I was forced into it in a sense like there wasn't any other option and like I had just been told by the director of my school like look you um, you maybe will never even become a professional dancer you don't have the turnout you don't have the coordination you're hearing you know? this <laughs> as a young kid like that's hard to it hear. was hard it was and I, I really didn't know what to do and my parents were spending a lot of money you know sending me to a really good school but you know even if you get the best schooling the the getting a professional ballet dancing job rate in the states is so hard especially a paying job. Yes, and at, at one of the major companies too. And yeah. we're talking about companies that yeah. work almost almost year round yeah. at least. And it's even harder because I know even ABT has it's 34 weeks. Yeah. ABT is 34 weeks, which I think, you know, after working in Russia, after working in Europe, I mean, that's kind of a disgrace. You it can't is. pay your dancers 52 weeks out of the year and give them vacation time. Do you know what City Ballet is, New York City Ballet? Is C City Ballet is, is one of the best paying, and I think they work 48, okay. if I'm not mistaken. And they have four weeks and off. They, but, I mean, they, City Ballet does a great job. They, that's, like, actually probably one of the best companies, I think, in the States to work for. Um, but it's very specific. You have to go to SAB. You have, mm -hmm. to, you have to kind of make that decision very early on. Yes, you need to be like 10, 11, 12 yeah. and be in SAB yeah. at that point. And frankly, a lot of parents who aren't from ballet you know, dynasties don't have that information. And I think that's what's so hard about training to be a professional dancer in the States is there's such a lack of information of like, what is the trajectory? What do we want? Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of know and get organized super early. Or you have to be lucky. Yeah, and if you don't have that local dance teacher that understands what mm -hmm. that system is and knows how to train those mm -hmm. students and feed them into SAB, not going to happen. We, we just have an overall lack of syllabus in the States. And just because you dance for a professional company does not mean you're qualified to teach children or, you know, or, or, or train them to become dancers. And we kind of sort of like, oh, well, that person worked for this ballet. They must know what they're doing. And that's so hard. And it, I, I just find when parents come to me and ask me questions, I just want to be like, do your research. Don't be afraid to write an email to a dancer in a ballet company. You know, get a second opinion. Uh, watch well, What online. should parents be looking for? Because that's a really great question I'm, in terms of, like, in a teacher, what should they be looking for? I think they need to find a teacher who you can see is invested in the child, mm -hmm. in the child's well-being. So that means a, a teacher that's going to tell the student no. You can't do that. 
you can't. That's too early. That's not that's not age appropriate or that's not the right thing for you. Getting on point too early drives Getting me on bananas. Point too far, going for these crazy like oversplits, this new fad of like Instagram dancing and in which you've got like these teeny bitty ballerinas trying to get skinnier and skinnier because they want to gain more followers. I'm like this has got to stop or someone has to to talk about it because it's not about those 15 seconds in your Instagram story. It's about who you are, what you want to say on stage, and your consistency, your dedication, and your work ethic. And that's more than just taking a picture after class. 100%. And, you know, it's. I think also sometimes I find that we've got really good technique on certain ones, and then there's no passion. All it is is place, place, technique, Thanks, technique, man. leg. And I was like, what's behind it? Yeah. Like, where... Where are you getting that emotion and that passion to dance? You know, and I would also, I mean, I think it's it's interesting and it's, I, you know, some people are saying I'm anti-competition. No, I think competition is a great opportunity for kids to get stage time. Mm -hmm. But I think that we need to work with our judges on the jury about how we score certain things and what are the what are the what are the criteria for certain ages because if we're going to have 12 year old black swan odeals i think that we have a problem like we need to talk about how that. that's that's like who is odeal what is her role you know i mean frankly i think of black swan as as a you know that part that role it's a woman who knows who she is mm -hmm. and is her own in her own skin and that is not a 12 year old no, they don't understand that. <laughs> they don't have the vocabulary. They haven't lived life. They yeah. don't have the emotion for That's it. Right. I think I'll go for it. Like love, love, love seeing those beautiful twelve-year-olds who are doing the wonderful pirouettes. But also, I mean, to to study the history and not just be a parrot. You know, of, oh, I saw that. I want to copy that. Like, why are we doing that? What is the importance of that? You know, what is the stories of the ballet? What is the history? Who's the choreographer? You know? Thank you for saying that. I talk about this all the time on the show of like, this generation is so fortunate. They've got everything right there for them on YouTube. YouTube. I mean, I had to go and take like a dance history class in college which was taught by the amazing Deborah Jowett. Um, and I learned so much, but I mean, it was literally like books and going to the library mm -hmm. and studying. It's all right there for you. And people just don't even want to find out who came before, whether it's a Broadway choreographer or commercial dance mm -hmm. or ballet. You need to understand this because it isn't just the person that dropped in 2017 that created this movement. Exactly. I got, I mean, I was just in Canberra and some of the kids were like, I, you know, had a little question and answer with the, some of the students and they, they said, Oh, and I said, okay, who's the choreographer of The Sleeping Beauty? And they're like, Joy, Joy Womack is the choreographer. I was like, no, no, I am not the choreographer of That Sleeping is lovely. <laughs> that but... is a great idea, but <laughs> no, it's Marius Pettipa, and, you know, the ballet is over 100 years old, you know, like, it's, and that just makes me a little bit sad, like, really? Okay, come on, kids, come tomorrow with two 20th century choreographers, and it, it gets them interested, and, yeah, and, and, and know one little fact about them, no. or something like that, yeah. just to yeah. get them started. And and I think, I mean, people have this idea of dance just being so simple and just this lighthearted undertaking. But there's such a rich history. There's so many beautiful people who came before and, and you know, created and, and, and how fun it is to know about them and then make your own thing and then you know bring that into who you are as a dancer on stage. And it also makes you a better dancer <laughs> because when you have the understanding of the material, then you, the way you're translating it and your interpretation of it, the audience will yeah. understand it more too, instead of just like, that was amazing fuetes and you know. The best dancer is a smart dancer. And there's a lot that goes into that. That's not just ours in the studio. That's a really good point. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for you, what I think is so fascinating, because you were a young, smart dancer. You well, knew. I don't think I was smart. But. I don't know. I think so, though, because I don't think that, that many um, you know, kids that are sort of preteen, early teens understand, like, I want to go and I want to study in Russia, or I know that this training is going to be right for me. You kind of like you're in a program and you kind of like it and your mom drops you off and you might be there five days a week. I don't think people have the understanding of like what you did at your age. I think that it's so important that if you decide that dance is for you, you need to strategize with open eyes uh, at your limit, your limits and your and your strengths mm -hmm. and be real with yourself. Don't sugarcoat it. And that's hard. And I, I think 
for me, I, I was just very ambitious, and I knew it wasn't working this way. And to have some, you know, old Russian woman think that I was the next best thing since sliced bread, I was like, wow, she obviously doesn't know. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's kind of taking a risk, but I also knew that I, I love Russian ballet. I love, I was obsessed at that time with uh, Natalia Osifova. I, I saw her premiere in Giselle, and I saw her oh. premiere in Lubai there. Like, I was a little student waiting in line for the 200-ruble tickets. And, and to be able to see those people that I had idolized up close and, and, and almost touch them was such, it was so important because I wanted exactly what she had. And I saw her trajectory. You know, I, her dorm mother was my dorm mother. You know, these kind of things. And, and I sort of had it in my mind that if I followed a certain path, it's gonna be my own path, but there's there's certain truths to that. There's certain she logic to that. She laid some blueprints that you were like, I, I kind of like this. Yeah. So when you went over to Russia, you were 15. It was yes. 2009, is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you do not speak the language, no. correct? No, not a word. You had never traveled abroad, is that correct? I had never. I mean, I think I'd been to Mexico, but I don't think okay. that really counts. Anybody when you live in Cali California, knows, I like... know. Or it's like right over the border. <laughs> do you want to? <laughs> exactly. You're like, yay, we're here. It doesn't really Churros. feel like a foreign. <laughs> exactly. No. When you go to Ensenada and things like that, it doesn't feel like a foreign country in many ways. So this is a big travel abroad. Uh, it's one of the most expensive cities in the world. World yeah, for it. that's yeah. not easy. Yeah. Um, Especially when I went, the ruble still hadn't fallen. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What was your first like month like there? Because I've got to. I, I think about doing it as an adult, and I'm completely overwhelmed just thinking about it. What was it like as a teen? I think th that's a really interesting point because with the eyes that I have now, I don't know if I would have done it. Like I think it was good that I was naive and I didn't know. Um, when I went. It was, I mean, really my first experience kind of in a foreign place. So to go, and I just remember driving down to Tverskaya, which is huge, six lane, like, each road, and just thinking, this is huge. And then the, the architecture, because in the States, we're so used to, like, kind of, like, thrown together houses, super And then when easy. we don't like it, we knock yeah. it down and we rebuild. And I'll never forget, people ask me, like, what was it like living to Russia? I'm like, imagine not thinking about like where toilet paper comes from. And then you're given one piece of like saw paper, like one roll of saw paper, that's your ration for a month. You gotta make that last. And you don't know how to say toilet paper in Russian. Right. And you don't even know the way to the Ram store, which is what, you know, the, the shops that were nearby, you weren't allowed out, you know, and just, to, I mean, of course I learned afterwards you should go and if you see somebody's extra toilet paper, <laughs> Don't take theirs, but if you see the door to the housekeeping uh, closet open, grab it while you can. <laughs> and, you know, navigating the Japanese mafia for the one washing machine out of, for the 300 students. I mean, like, there's just crazy stories, but... Oh, my gosh. I mean, and my, my leotards kept disappearing and just, you know, You're weird, like, where are they going? Things. They're all gone. You were the only American there at the time? I was... No, the, the, this is a clarification. Because yeah, a lot of people this. say, oh, you know, Joy wasn't the first... American, blah, blah, blah. There are, were foreigners there. I was brought in to supplement a Russian class, which they didn't have um, until my time. A, American girls in the Russian class finishing that, that program, getting the Russian diploma. Mm -hmm. um, and my situation is very unique because now there's a lot of American girls there after I did my thing mm -hmm. um, who they're there, they're in the Russian class, but they're not being used. I was being given principal roles in school right when I got off the airplane basically and that was so that was so hard because I went into a class and I like the kids were like who is this girl and she's taking away my opportunity yeah and and you don't speak the language so you can't understand what they're saying about you right I was just very 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 lucky there was a woman there Natalia Natalia Archivova and she was like I think I can help you become a dancer in the bowl, right? And that's what I want to do. And so for the first year, she pushed me so hard. And she, you know, taught me the whole ballet of La Fima Garde, the whole ballet of Nutcracker, so that I could be the understudy for the the, the senior girls. And like, I mean, I'm just like this basically freshman, right? you know, coming in and she's pushing me. I don't speak the language. I don't have the training. And I had to retrain at the same time, go back and undo so many bad habits, so many Americanisms. Let's talk about what are some of those Americanisms that you had to, the hands? <laughs> oh, turnout is something you shouldn't force. There's an idea of 
turnout, you don't force turnout, but there are muscles that you can train if you train them in the right way. So just standing at the bar and doing the slowest tondus, literally eight counts out and eight counts in, and learning where my back was, learning where, where my hands should be, learning hand-eye coordination, going through first position. These are things I don't see in American students. We go for the Grand Allegro without going through first position. So and we crank the turnout. I will tell you, I've got hips that no, have that feel it you like now copy turnout but, but real turnout comes from the ankle bone mm -hmm. protecting that joint and so to have somebody break that down and it show me how to work with my limited you know f facility and work smart was just it was mind-blowing and it was so hard it was so humbling and uh, then when that teacher she left because her husband had a health crisis in the second year the second year I had to start over from the bottom prove myself oh my over again and get up <laughs> and go to this principal dancers house and she would train me from six to eight and then I'd get on the train go to school and train the rest of the day um, and that's kind of when progress started to happen because somebody was really like who wasn't affiliated with the school was working with me and I think that's the biggest advice I can get to a dancer it doesn't matter how big of a school you go to if you don't have somebody working with you on on what you need to work on it's not worth it it's worth staying at home with your family with your teacher that's going to be pushing you rather than going to a big school and getting lost in mm. in a crowd like a lot of people are like oh I want to go to Debbie Allen dance or like or or you know you know Abby Lee or something like that it's like <laughs> well did Abby Lee pick you did Abby Lee have an idea of what you can dance what your role is like who are does the teacher see you and see what they can be giving you and you don't just go to the name school like if they say we want you here yeah. they will give you that individual yeah. attention and what I w I was so lucky at Bolshoi because I was I was touring with the, like the, the child touring company that they had that's part of their school. So mm -hmm. I was like, I went to Spain the, within the first three months of being there. Like, I, And this is after never being to a foreign country and getting to represent all of a sudden this Russian ballet school, this weird American girl. Like, I was 16 years old and dancing the lead role in the Kennedy Center for the Protégés project that Bolshoi School brought. And that was just such a special moment to have the director of Kirov School, who told me I would never be a professional dancer, come and watch you yeah. at the Kennedy Center you're like told you no but it's not that and then <laughs> and then I was lucky like at, at 18 they I, I got the highest grade in my class and the other girl who was my huge competition from Belarus she was a competition star mm -hmm. she was you know she had like international competition laureate which is very big in Russia you should have a medal if you want to join a professional company it's different standard than in the states and I mean we were competing to the point where she would not talk to me you know, and we were in the same class. Like, we were fighting tooth and nail for this spot at Bolshoi. And then to be able to be invited and join the Bolshoi company um, and be, be chosen by Natalia Sufova's coach to work with her, that was Such so a huge different. honor. A, yeah. a huge honor. And I felt like I had a responsibility to say yes to that and not to ask questions like, should I join, go back home? Should I do this? I was like, I got to ride this wave right. for as long as I can. Because I, an I opportunity. felt until, until maybe a year ago that uh, everybody, d how have I tricked everybody? I'm not actually good. I'm not actually this. Like, I'm, And I, I still feel like that. I, I mean, Are you, is your brain still telling you that? Yeah, because I'm like, wait, when is everyone going to wake up and realize that like, I'm not Russian or like I'm not like this but I'm never I mean I've never been Russian but it was so weird for me to be touring the world with Kremlin Ballet and being called like Russian ballerina or Russian dancer and and I think it's a lesson that like guys we don't need I was working for my coaches in a sense of like I needed their approval mm -hmm. and now I'm dancing because I love it. I, and I think that's, that's a realization that comes a little bit with age as yeah. you get older. And yeah. But I think a lot of times, and I can go back and even look when I was younger dancing, and it was, it was constantly seeking approval. And I do think that, that ballet does set up that oh, structure yeah. Yeah. quite a bit. Um, and there, there's a lot of things that go along with that. I think um, staring at yourself every day mm -hmm. in a mirror mm -hmm. and the weight issue goes along with that, um, seeking approval from... You know, whether if you're an athlete, it's your coach, but, you know, and it's your teacher when you're in dance class. Um, and it, it's when you finally make that breakthrough, it's very freeing. I yeah. will say that yeah. because you let go a little bit of the perfectionism and then embrace the rawness and, and the beauty of what yeah. dance is about. Yeah. I mean, I think that's I'm so grateful to Russia and the the clear black and white kind of standard that it's given me 
But I know that forgiveness and forgiveness of oneself needs to exist in order to make something real on stage happen. Or else it looks like a golden gilded parrot, which is how I felt Mm -hmm. myself in the last year. Really, I I was just like, you know, I was scared of my coach's comments after the show. And just like, you know, that's you work with the same teacher in Russia for your whole life kind of a thing. And that's great. It's awesome. And it keeps you in shape. But I felt a little bit dead inside artistically. Yeah. Yeah, that that totally mm-hmm. makes sense, and you needed more. Yeah. And uh, you know, as you, because you're not old at all. You're tw- oh. what? You're 23 right now. Yeah, but I feel the old years. <laughs> I know, no, but you're those so young. Shoes. But I mean, oh, I know point shoes kill. <laughs> they do kill. They kill those feet. But you know, I think that's what's important, though. As you you recognize what you need as mm-hmm. an adult, and you're like, oh, I need this in my life. I need this in my mm-hmm. dance career. A couple things I want to ask about Russia. First of all, um, how long did it take you to really master the language? I was lucky because I was really pushed into an environment where I had to speak Russian. Um, and my, easy t- language. my coach said if I didn't speak Russian in three months, she'd kick me out of the class. So, I mean, I, I think I had like, I was, I remember, I have a clear memory of being in Barcelona and having a conversation saying like, I want to go and see the Basilica. Like, I, I need hairspray. Can you give me hairspray? Like, whereas in, before I was kind of like, <laughs> I need that, this. And I was like, <laughs> luck, luck. Luck. Okay, me like me luck. Like, and then I remembered, like, I like was actually able to like voice saying that I needed something, and that was like a moment of like. And then I think it took me a year, and then I was just gaining vocabulary. And yep. I mean, a language is like, is like your splits. If you don't practice your splits, they go away. You know. So, uh, for me, it opened a new passion. Like I, I'm studying currently. <laughs> you're gonna be laugh. <laughs> French, Spanish, Danish. Uh, Korean because I'm moving to Korea. Oh my gosh. Mandarin. Uh, I was studying Japanese because I was just in Japan. <laughs> and then a new one I've just added because I'm going to be a guest artist with Istanbul Opera. Um, oh, that's cool Turkish, though. So. But I think once you get a knack for understanding what you need to pick up languages, I think it becomes yeah. easier. And like French and Spanish and Italian, the yeah. Romance languages, there's a lot of vocabulary yeah. that's similar. So. Well, my parents, thanks, thank God, when I was homeschooled, like forced me to study Latin with a French teacher. And I think that is the key. Is if you the study, dead language, that is the foundation for everything, everything. honestly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, did you go to school in Russia um, to finish out high school? How did so, you do it? I had a very interesting scholastic kind of career. And I, this is me, parents, I'm not advocating this. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, I went to a private Christian school that was like affiliated with the church that we were going to. So that was like, I had the same six classmates until I was in sixth grade. Like very almost Small. like, you know... Um, and so then to move to Kirov Academy, which was a secular high school, um, and I also skipped a grade. Like, I went from being in sixth grade, and then I did seventh grade online, like, and studying Latin and all that thing. I went straight into ninth grade, like, and you can imagine this, like, weird, like, church girl with, like, hair down to her butt, like, never even, like, had said a curse word in her life, all of a sudden moving to ballet school. It's like... <laughs> something straight out of like center stage or something like that. I love that. that. Like I was the nerd. Like to this day my good friend Chase O'Connell who is a principal dancer with uh with Valley West, we did a guesting last year. He's like, "Joy, you were the weirdest girl." And I was so mad when you were my chemistry partner. I just thought he was the most gorgeous <laughs> thing and I was like <laughs> And he was like, oh, man, I got the weird girl. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll do your homework for you, you know? Like, uh, anyway. Uh, and then what times. happened when you got to Russia? I went into Russian high school. So I have Russian degree. That's and amazing. Russian college That's degree. so, so interesting. Um, I wanted to get like a, G, like a GED, GED but at the same time, my Russian degree carries over. And, That's all you need. Um, yeah. How about food in Russia? What was that like? Because, I mean, here, we go to a grocery store and you're like, we've got everything. You can possibly want more. Well, there, um, especially now, I, I mean, it was better when I first went there. Now it's because they have a ban on, on um, Western imports. I mean, the food quality in restaurants, it's gotten a lot better over the mm-hmm. years. Um, but I discovered, like, I got extremely ill on one of the tours. We went to Greece for a month. And I'm 16 years old, you know, this is when they were having um, huge riots in the streets and we were getting tear gassed like on the way oh to the gosh. And so I thought my my parents thought it was a reaction to the tear gas, like something happened. And I, I thought it was like either it's a reaction to the tear gas or it's my back. Um, 
And I came home and I was hospitalized for two and a half weeks. And my mom was like, look, we've got to take gluten out of your diet because I think you're having your body's like attacking itself. And Mm -hmm. uh, after I did that, not only did I lose a lot of weight that Mm -hmm. fit the aesthetic that they were looking for. Oh, (laughs) no. They, it it did help me with inflammation and help me with like, I, I, you know, I didn't have a slip disc in my back. Yeah. And so then, you know, and then I, and then I didn't, I mean, they would literally give us a cow's tongue for lunch, like, and I just couldn't eat meat anymore. So I, that's my diet now, which is like gluten free and and vegetarian. And I've done really well with that diet in Russia and also when I travel because like I'll spend a month in China and if you're eating meat you can get really sick yeah. because of the different parasites that can live in when I was you know, there there was like a swine outbreak and you shouldn't be eating pork and I yeah no I could tell you horror stories of the parasites I've had the the I mean you know you get really sick from drinking bad water and there's you know not good water there but Russia now if you have money you can you can do you can have what you need but it's not here in America we get so used to just this like epic amount of options and yeah so and if we don't like it then you just throw it away and you get something else get something new and and the portion size so when I come back here my mom thinks it's hilarious we're, we're taking joy for her H-E-B time <laughs> she will drop me off at the H-E-B which is like a superstore in in, in Texas and yes. I will just take a cart and walk down the aisles you're like we gotta I'm do like, this like, I just, it's like this? sensory overload. I love it. I love it. Uh, can we talk about um, the, the Russian aesthetic? And I think that the ballet aesthetic uh, all the time is always such an issue, too. Like, are, are they looking for the same sort of thin wayfish, which has changed a little bit in the United States in the ballet world? It's gotten a little better. Um, this is a very serious topic for me because I recently lost a student. Oh, you did? Um, to suicide. Oh, my gosh. Um, and somebody who went to the Bolshoi Valley Academy. Wow. But that has started a dialogue. And you know what? And that usually does start a dialogue. Um, because when I was there, uh, we have, and it's now, you can find the tab. I think they even have it online. There's height, weight requirements. But you have to also understand that these girls are chosen from the age 10. Mm-hmm. So they're weeded out. So a lot of them have this look naturally. Yeah. It's not... But this is me, big boned American girl, trying You're to fit myself. Boned. You're not big boned, though. <laughs> and they would call me muscular, overly, overly muscular, even now. Um, there's this, you know, I, I had to be. I when I finished graduation, and this is, I was 38 kilograms. That's too small. That was, what does that translate into U.S.? That was like it's almost. Well, I know in pounds, I was I think 78. Or eight, like I was. You, I got, you're not gotten, even the hundred. I had like I had gotten so thin, like I was just skeletal. Yeah, and I could not do everything that I can do now. Like I just was the like very. And how tall you're taller than me, so you're, yeah, are well, you like five six ish? Five five and a half. Five, okay, because I'm five three, yeah. so just think. So, but I mean, now I weigh 103 pounds, and like that's you know like their their um, weight for when you're in school is. For my height, you have to be 45 kilograms, which is 100 pounds. Okay. So that's, yeah. It's it's at least higher. Yeah. But if you look at the Bolshoi company and if you look at Stanislavski Theater, they have healthy, healthy women. Okay. You know. So I think it's just the look of the schools. Um, Mariinsky, I think they are a lot thinner. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're also very tall. The girls in Mariinsky, you can't get hired unless you're 5'7". Oh, interesting. Right now. Yeah. That's well, the trend. You know, it was interesting. Uh, growing up and studying at Boston Ballet, We when we would do juries and stuff like that, and this is back in the day and they don't do it anymore, but mm-hmm. it was performance technique and the third category was weight. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's something that even happens over here in the U.S. and mm-hmm. no one's immune to it. And uh, But I hopefully, I hope that everyone is in a better place of where everyone's talking about it a little bit more or understands better nutrition or treating bodies better because I think it, each year it gets better. It's better, but we have to also understand this is, you need to be real with yourself what profession you're going into. You're going to put a tutu on on stage or a leotard. So and you're in a mirror every day You're too. in a mirror every day. So take care of your mental health, but there's an aesthetic. So take care. And I think that we've gotten a lot better in the States about cross training and, and talking about nutrition and, you know, you know, adding put, Pilates. Adding, yeah. 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 It's not just like, I'm going to go on a crazy diet and, you know, drink like gallons of water, you or know, just ha- eat air and cigarettes and, and water. Yeah. No. And I, I, um, 
I'm all for a good cross train, mm-hmm. like a good cardio session, a good, you know, I love that. And I love being in a stable base where you can provide that for yourself. It's harder if you're freelancing um, to provide that. Right. You know, because it's not not compensated by the companies. So, And, and you had some injuries when you were over in Russia, too. Yes. You were dancing yeah. on broken. Broken bones. <sighs> I had a broken wrist. I was, like, doing shinies, and my coach pushed me, and it was cold. So oh I gosh. slipped and broke my wrist literally right before <laughs> we were getting on the plane. And, like, this so it looks like, oh, it will be fine. Just do this. And I was like. And I flew all the way to Washington like this. And they, no. like, saw it open the cast. And I was like, we're going to do it. And no. with, with a broken wrist. And my mom has it framed in the review. They're like, her fluid wrist. And my mom was dying. Yeah, you're like, my wrist was floppy because it was broken. <laughs> I, and I, I there's, a, there's a great New York Times piece about yeah. you from when. Uh, and I, I just got s- to the school. I, I mean, because we have to talk about the, the floors in Russia are raked. They're raked, yeah. So I think that was a lot of pressure on my, yeah, my still form bones to go from being like this to like that and so i was just ready for the stress structures. and they're they just like froze your ankle and you dance oh yeah I they have like, this Ugh. freeze on that they just freeze, freeze you up you go out there you do your thing then you come back out now see I, I you know dancers are always to me they are the toughest athletes out there and we dance through pain and we have a high threshold for pain but that just listening to even that in that little new york times video i was like that was so hard too because my parents were really like you should come home and I knew that if I left there wouldn't be a place for me because like, no my back. my coach had like forced her forced away for me and they were taking so many risks and like really if it weren't for her unbelievable yeah can we talk a little bit about why you left Bolshoi a little uh, bit yeah yeah sure. you're totally yeah. open about that uh because it's you know what? And I was thinking about this. I'm like, it's a lot of what's happening here in Hollywood and what we're talking about and things mm-hmm. like that. And there was a lot of like, um, they would expect some of the, the dancers maybe to be sponsored by gentlemen kind of thing. And well, I think also the the period that the Bolshe is in now, like the new director of Aziev is he's a wonderful man so there's been a nice and there's been and there and like i have so many wonderful friends there and i just did moscow ballet competition and was in classes with my old teachers and things like that and it's wonderful like it was so wonderful to be back um i was just in a very weird period in the company like with a very like there was just a Different a, people were in power. Let's just say that. And there was a lot of weirdness going on. I mean, yeah. one of the principal dancers, uh, what, commissioned, like, an acid attack on the artistic director? There's a lot of, like, I'm weirdness. not going to comment on that because there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of, like, you know, Pavel, I don't think, was guilty. Like, I think there's a lot of things the, that were, like, framing and Politics just, and things like that to get into like it. But you guys can read up on it. Yeah. It's just weird. It, well, there's a lot of just non-truths that are yeah. out there. So... Like, personally, me, you know, like, there's, that just happens. That's not, I'm not unique. It just happens to most dancers in that company, and that's kind of something that you are expected to either be okay with or not okay with. And and uh, it was made very clear to me that if I didn't find protection, that even though I could dance certain things and I was getting certain things ready, I would not have, you know, first run or second run or third run or fourth run. Uh, and they were basically asking for money, but for roles. I think right? things that the the thing that was like wrongly reported is like, oh, she's expecting it in its principles. No, I was so happy doing what what I was doing. I was so happy being there, learning, and I was just very lucky to be being coached on on you know Cinderella, on uh, Swan Lake, on on like different soloist roles. Like in Don Quixote, there's like bridesmaid variations, like starting slow, um, and and I would not be given those opportunities because other girls were. You know, either they were more in favor or things like that. And it just, like, I, but I kept that story to myself. And then when I went on tour, because a lot of the girls who this was happening to, we would just tour with with other bullshit, excuse me, dancers mm-hmm. um, around Russia. Mm-hmm. So one of those tours, I went to Krasnodar, and a woman published an interview that was, like, from my point of view, sharing, my, like, that story. That's everybody's story in the company. And then right. that went viral. 
Like I came home back from this, this first of all, the, the Russian TV that they found me in Krasnodar, like the, these like paparazzi and were like trying to get like a comment and my phone was blowing up and it was the yeah, scariest like, this isn't thing. my story, this is every female story. It was everyone's story, but it also, I didn't choose to share it in a sense of like, I knew my job was gonna be over if I opened my mouth. And so that kind of decision was kind of made for me, like, oh, she's American, she'll land on her feet. Like we need her side of her story. So I kind of came back and was like shell shocked, like, oh my God, what do I do? Like this job that I've given up so much of my life or made so many personal sacrifices for like, it's like, it's technically over, you know? And like you come home and at the Metro and there's like your face in a picture of like American accuses the Bolshoi <gasps> of like, you know, and it's also this like, oh, Americans hate Russians kind of a thing, which we don't know but there's this attitude there that we do and i could not be more grateful for andrew buddy switch the director of kremlin he gave me a job when and everybody a principal else, job correct yeah he was like i was 19 years old he's like come and dance the lead in nutcracker so this is kremlin ballet theater which is in this is center of red square this the theater is 6500 seats mm -hmm. and he's like come after I just had all of this media, like, this girl is a liar, this girl is a blah, oh blah, blah. Oh, my gosh. And it, for me, it was almost like, maybe I am, maybe, like, maybe, you know, like, maybe I don't deserve this. It was just, like, this, like, huge personal crisis. And, and to be given a second chance and then given a coach, she formed me from being nobody to, they gave me a chance and they gave me chance after chance. And I went and competed in Perm and did really well, got a medal there. And that kind of was like, okay, all right, we're going to give you opportunities now. Wow. And to be, you know, and 19 years old as a principal dancer, I mean, that was it's so... It's a lot. It's a lot of so pressure, much too. So pressure. And, and that started kind of a... Um, people think like, oh, wow, that's amazing to be promoted at 19. I just wanted a place to, like, hide. I didn't, you know... I almost was scared of the spotlight. So I started this whole, it started this whole kind of um, like time in my life where I was fiercely scared of the stage. Mm. Because I was scared of being like, oh, she doesn't deserve that. Like it's only because of well, her. And then you feel vulnerable and yeah. you feel exposed. Yeah. And because someone exposed you yeah. on the, the personal yeah. side of. So I didn't your... know who to trust. I didn't know oh, boy. what to do. Things in my personal life were falling apart and just. You know, to be so young and have to deal with all of that, it was, my refuge was actually, like, the, the repetition of ballet. Like, it wasn't the actual performance. It was just the, like, daily grind. Yep, get to the yeah. ballet bar, yeah. to start doing the plies. And... and it just, and it almost seemed like when people would tell me about, like, oh, wow, your story's so amazing, like, well, I didn't believe them. So that's when I decided, to, I was like, look, I'm going to start recording my days and recording my rehearsals because... Like, I need to keep record, and I want to share my story. I want to share my side, because I felt like so many people were judging me. Mm -hmm. And so then that's when I started posting videos every day online. Um, and then last year, there was a huge crackdown on um, content, like, in, you know, being created. And Was so that coming was, from the ballet company, or was it coming from Russia itself? Well, I don't, I mean, I think that my company was just made to feel very uncomfortable. Like, people, you know... Uh, I mean, first of all, it was exposing kind of the laziness, the attitude that, like, was there in the company. And, like, people don't think, people think Russian ballet and they don't think of, like, laziness. There's a lot of the fact that, that there, it is state-sponsored. There's a ballet company in every single city. Um, and if you finish the, the ballet school, that becomes your profession. So you have these incredible dancers who are solos, soloists and principals. They're extremely ambitious. But the people who are in the corner ballet, that's kind of their job. They don't they didn't even have the option to study and try to do something else. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them take it like, oh, just getting the morning coffee, like taking the dog out for a walk. Right. And that's where I came up against a lot of hate because these girls who are like, well, who does she think she is? Like, she can just push her way to the front, like, you know. Yeah, I've been here in the corps de ballet for X amount of years. Yeah, yeah. Who is she? Yeah, and and that's, and so some of those girls just got really angry and just like were like, she has to stop sharing stuff online and that was really hard for me because I love making content so I'll make a video like every week or every two weeks or something like that and I'll put it up but then when I decided this year to transition I was like I cannot put what's going on out online because I don't want it 
you know, I don't want to have repercussions. Well, you've already lived through that too. Yeah. From the Bolshoi, you kind of yeah. like understand like yeah, there's like, certain there's things I just need Kenshi. to step back from. Yeah. Um, and that comes with maturity too. Yeah. Like oh. we understand, like you just throwing everything out there is probably it, not the best it's idea. It's short-sighted. It's short-sighted. And ballet, <clears throat> your dance career, and this is not just for ballerinas, it's a checkers game. It's a chess game. You gotta, and that's that kind of ties back to what you were saying beforehand. It's like girls who want to be ballet dancers, guys who want to be ballet dancers, think of your life strategically. Yeah. Like, think about, because you have an idea of what you want, be realistic, and then make the plan. And then if things happen, then things just happen also. They do. And, and that sometimes you think your course is going, like, right, and sometimes you need to go left, and you need yeah. to embrace going left on that because yeah. that's the door that's opening, and I think that's what we fail to see sometimes. Oh, and, and for sure. I mean, I was, I, up until, like, June of last year, I was like, I'm going to stay with Kremlin. I'm going to either, like, go back to Bolshoi or Marinsky. Like, that's my plan. Mm -hmm. Like, blah, blah, blah. Russia, Russia, Russia. Um, I love Russia and I will never not love Russia and I'm so happy to have a base there and I will still continue to do work there but I was so scared of my coach's kind of judgment of me she said like look if you aren't with me you can't you're I'm gonna blackball you you can't dance oh with gosh. anybody else and it just sort of made me feel like I wasn't good enough to yeah. try to do what I wanted to do and I just couldn't imagine just dancing Swan Lake and Don Quixote for the rest of my life. I love them. Was that your aha moment? Like my my aha moment was after I did Moscow competition and realized like that's kind of the last thing I really felt like I really wanted to do in Russia. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, where do I go from here? And like, I'll never forget Nina Kapsova crying on a... Up there. Yeah, like I'll never forget Nina Kapsova crying on a couch because she didn't get first cast in a Negan. And like Nina Kapsova is one of the most beautiful, humble working like hard-working dancers I've met and I'm like I do not want to be 35 years old and crying because I didn't get the role I wanted right. like and I was like yes I love Russia but I've got to go I've you got need to a little go more control grow. I think over yeah. like not only growth journey but a little bit more control over your story yeah. I think I think yeah. that's what's really important um when you decided to leave did you know where you were going next or well, has it been a little bit more I, like, I hadn't, I was like, well, okay, well, I'll, like, re-audition here, do this, do that. And that was huge eye-opening. Like, I auditioned for so many companies, and I was like, you're great, but we don't have a place for you. Or, like, you don't fit our company, do, do this. And I was like, wow, I've gone through all this training, done all of this, like, won these awards, blah, blah, blah. And it's nothing. It, it is so, like, whatever the director needs at that moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like, Julie Ken was so nice, but she's like, look, I can't give you a place in, in my company. And that was, like, really hard because I would have loved to move back to the States. I would have loved to dance with ABT or, or you know, Washington Ballet. And, and, like, I was like, give me a core place. You know, like, I will, I'll start over from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, you're like, I'm you fine know? being Like, whatever, you need member. me to hold the pole in the background, that's great because I would really like to see my parents more than once a year, you know. Mm -hmm. and um, And it was, like, almost this moment of, like, oh, my God, like, God, like, why bring me so far just to not like where where am I supposed to be and I was flying back to Moscow and I was like look okay joy like you need to humble yourself you just need to suck it up and you just need to see what you have to learn this year like mm -hmm. if it's just patience then then it's just putting one foot in front of the other putting one hand at the bar and just doing it doing your job um like, as much as it, it pains you to be around people who don't want to be there and, and um, frankly, just not understanding why you want to be doing it. And I get this email from wonderful Brian at University of Bell, and he's like, look, I've seen some of your videos, and I'd love to offer you a principal position. And that just shock, shook me to the core. Because how could this girl who's had all of this crap, like, shared about her online, you know, be able to get a, a wonderful job so it's going to be a new adventure in korea and and i'm excited to learn and just those dancers are so hardworking and so beautiful and i can't wait to take three steps back and start again it's like a new chapter yeah that's what's so great now when do you officially start in korea the 22nd 
Oh my gosh, really uh, soon. Well, no, no, the 22nd of January. January, okay. I was like, oh my gosh, you're not going to even spend, you're just going to spend Christmas with your family at least? No, I'm going to Cherokee now and then to prepare for Swan Lake. Then I'm going to dance with uh, the, I'm going to dance in Melbourne Mm -hmm. um, with a beautiful school. They're putting on a full length production. Um, And my partner from Turkey and I are going to go and dance that, which is really exciting because it's just this kind of combination of all all over the world oh, i love um, that and then i go back and i dance a, a pro- performance in yaroslav on the 31st um and then and then i'll probably be moving to south korea after that that's incredible yeah. so is it a full-time position in korea yes okay yeah. that's great we so were talking just, about you know just how hard it is in the states to have a full-time position because a full-time position really doesn't necessarily exist because yeah. you have layoffs and things like that I call being a professional dancer in the States, like, no offense to everybody, it's being a professional student because you rehearse a production for three months and then you get one go. Yep. How can you grow as a dancer if the one thing that you're dancing is Nutcracker? Yeah, you don't have that constant, like, repertory going out there. Yeah, and you do, you prepare for a show, you give a left arm and a, le- and a right lung for that show, and then you dance it once, and then maybe that performance comes around three years later. And I just feel like American audiences would love the ballet if it were more accessible. And that's why we need state funding for the arts. And we're struggling with that right no. now. And it's a big issue for me. And people ask me all the time, what do I see myself doing after dance? Like, oh, will you be a teacher? Will you be a director? I want to be an advocate, a lobbyist for dance funding in the States and, and a spokesperson for why we need classical ballet, how great it is, um, and travel the world just sort of outreaching to different governments saying like look give us a little money we'll we'll take it far will yeah. you and there's a wonderful woman lisa makuha in the philippines she started a school mm-hmm. this school gives free tuition those kids that make it into the company then are given a salary that salary supports that whole extended family wow. those family members are making costumes you know working in the backstage so you've got this ballet company that's helped this community that was struggling with drugs with underage pregnancy just kind of lift itself up it changes yeah Yeah, one one person can change an entire community with that how great would it be to have you know non-for-profit ballet schools in low-income places and you know subsidized uh training costs clothing costs what would that do for a community that's drug riddled? Oh, it'll change lives. We we know that. Like that's not even. I mean, you're seeing it's there. We've seen it even here in the United States. Yeah. Not in ter- terms of like state run and things like that, but a when kids, yeah, private schools, it. yep. Yeah. It's it's kind of amazing. That's and you know what? That's great too when you have because you know your dance career is going to be X amount of years to already know and and have plans for what you're going to do next I think is fantastic mm-hmm. because a lot of dancers kind of get to a point or they have that unexpected injury and go what, what next? do I do what do I do I don't know what to do all I've had is dance yeah. and maybe they don't want to teach what are you yeah. going to do well and not everybody can be a teacher and that's a t- that's also a mistake don't force yourself into a teaching position if that's not your calling that was me yeah yeah i mean and there's and- nothing wrong with that there's nothing to be ashamed with that and that's actually wise and big of you to say like look this isn't my role Mm -hmm. Uh, because children I mean that's a big responsibility it's not just teaching them the steps it's how you are your your way your respect your you know your discipline and and that's I mean I've given a master class where I've gotten a side eye and I've called a kid out on it and maybe (laughs) that wasn't the thing that I should have done yep you know Uh, but I, I mean we we need we need funding. Yeah, we do need funding. And we don't need... I had take issue with private funded things because then you have somebody dictating what you're doing because not all gifts are given without any strings attached. Uh, there are usually lots of strings. And, That's the problem. And then you're, then you're an artist for commission. And then where's your artistic freedom? And you lose all yeah. of that. Yeah. People think of Russia as like, wow, they are so not free there. No, each and every city has a ballet company. Kazan has a ballet company of 300 people. That's not only just, there's opera, there's there's ballet, there's the costume department, there's music, there's a full-time orchestra. And a full-time orchestra a is full-time such orchestra. Do you know a where luxury. Kazan is? Do you know where Yoshkarala is? Like these places that like, Ekaterinburg, Novosibirsk, like they have huge 
theaters they're putting on full-time productions and it's not just like oh this we have swan lake for two weeks no it's you know on monday we have swan lake on tuesday we have don quixote uh, thursday we have balanchine you know this kind of a thing the audiences love it the tickets are not more than 20 bucks oh my gosh and here it's like you know 200 bucks for a nice orchestra yeah. seat and things like that yeah. here in the u.s it's, it's really a challenge yeah and and how could you get a family to take their kids out to that, to that that's not in a, and some of these companies like some of the programming it's not age appropriate and i mean we are not giving the story ballets enough credit that's that's absolutely true because it is it's a family event that you can take them to i mean talk about going to the sleeping beauty seeing a disney movie come alive like that's that's you want exactly to take your what it is. Of Do course. you want to take your six-year-old to whatever Sarah Sue has thought about last Thursday with the, with no top on? You know, like sometimes that's what you're doing when you're in these companies. You're doing like rep. That uh, that's great, but that should be offered as supplemental. It shouldn't be like the only thing on the menu. Absolutely. I can't believe an hour's up, Sorry. believe it or not. No, it's like, no, I was I like, this is good. This we can talk long. about for hours and hours because it's, it's so fascinating. Um, I just want to mention that you're here and you're dancing Nutcracker this weekend, yes. West Side Ballet. West Side Ballet, go check it out. This is the 45th season they've done this production. And you're Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm going to be the Sugar Plum Fairy. Yeah. But there's a great cast of talented, talented kids. And what theater are they? Um, they are at the Broad Theater in Santa Monica. Oh, fan. Fantastic. Go check it out. I, I want to thank you so much for being open and honest because I know that it's just it's such an amazing journey that you've had and I know you're in the middle of your journey mm -hmm. which is, is even more incredible and I can't wait to see the next chapter and I hope that if you're here next time you come on back. Oh it would be so fun. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah I want to hear about chapter two yeah. and chapter three. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen. This grandma's got to point her toes. You know, <laughs> got to work on that turnout. But You're good. You're good. <laughs> you're not giving yourself enough credit for what you've accomplished. Um, for people that want Want to connect with you instagram twitter where can they find you i am on instagram at joy.womack um, on twitter i'm on facebook i'm on youtube and you can follow me you can send me a message and i'm also on mentally so if you want to get a private session of coaching you can sign up at mentally and uh, you can get an hour skype session with me for free and ask questions about your career i love that yeah, yeah. thank you so much joy and i'm so excited just to you know hear about everything that's next i'll keep Keep, keep you up to date and guys go see dance please support your ballet <laughs> and write your congressman we That's, need arts funding we certainly do there's so many things to write our congressman about right now <laughs> oh my oh gosh. gosh so much going on here but uh, of course we want to thank you guys for joining us here at to the point uh, next week we do have dancing with the stars pro gleb savchenko oh, he will be fun. here i know another russian Ooh. yes of course say for me. <laughs> i will <Yeah. laughs> i only know how to say cheers that's all that's all all right well thank you so much you guys and we will see you all next week here on to the point presented by popcorn talk and dance network from producers maria menounos kevin undergaro phil spitek and the entire popcorn talk network we would like to thank you for tuning in for questions or comments be sure to visit popcorntalk.com i'm sir richard wentworth and this has been a presentation of the popcorn talk network the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the popcorn talk network or its owners or principals